If I ran the zoo. It's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew. And the fellow who runs it seems proud of it, too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I'd do. The lions and tigers and that kind of stuff they have up here now are not quite good enough. You see things like these in just any old zoo. They're awfully old-fashioned. I want something new. So I'd open each cage. I'd unlock every pen. Let the animals go and start over again. And somehow or other, I think I could find some beasts of a much more unusual kind. A four-footed lion's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet at least. Five legs on the left and five more on the right. Then people will stare and they'll say, what a sight! This zookeeper, new keeper Gerald's quite keen. That's the gold darndest lion I have ever seen. My new zoo, McGruzu, will make people talk. My new zoo, McGruzu, will make people gawk at the strangest odd creatures that ever did walk. I'll get for my zoo a new sort of a hen who roosts in another hen's top knot. And then another one roosts in the top knot of his, and another in his, and another in his. And so forth, and upward, and onward. Gee whiz! But that's just a start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat, coming into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised, they'll all swallow their gum. They'll ask when they see my strange animals come, where do you suppose he gets things like that from? His animals all have such very odd faces. I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go places quite out of the way. You have to go places no others can get to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet too. Up past the North Pole, where the frozen winds squeal. I'll go and I'll hunt in my Skeagle-mobile and bring back a family of what do you know? And that's how my new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will grow. I'll hunt in the mountains of Zamba Matant with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant. and capture a fine fluffy bird called the Bustard, who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard. And also a very fine beast called the Flustered, who only eats mustard with sauce made of custard. I'll catch him in caves, and I'll catch him in brooks. I'll catch him in crannies. I'll catch him in nooks that you don't read about in geography books. I'll catch him in countries that no one can spell, like the country of Matafapatafapel. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, he'll hunt up some beast that you never saw ever. I'll 
load up five boats with a family of jotes whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skin coats and sit down like dogs but have voices like goats, excepting they can't sing the very high notes. And then I'll go down to the wilds of Nantucket and capture a family of lunks in a bucket. Then people will say, now I like that boy heaps. His Nuzu Magruzu is growing by leaps. He captures them wild and he captures them meek. He captures them slim and he captures them sleek. What do you suppose he will capture next week? I'll capture one tiny. I'll capture one cute. I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot. A deer that's so nice he could sleep in your bed if it weren't for those horns that he has on his head. Speaking of horns that are just a bit queer, I'll bring back a very odd family of deer. A father, a mother, two sisters, a brother whose horns are connected from one to the other. Whose horns are so mixed they can't tell them apart. Can't tell where they end and can't tell where they start. Each deer is mighty puzzled. He's never yet found if his horns are hers or the other way round. I'll capture them fat, and I'll capture them scrawny. I'll capture a scragglefoot mulligatawny. A high-stepping animal, fast as the wind, from the blistering sands of the desert of Zind. This beast is the beast that the brave chieftains ride when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. A mulligatawny is fine for my zoo. <gasps> and so is a chieftain. I'll bring one back too. In the far western part of southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called the iota. <laughs> But I'll capture one who is even much finer in the northeastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will say, Now by thunder, this Nuzu Magruzu is really a wonder. Most beasts are quite friendly, but still, in some lands, some beasts are too dangerous to catch with bare hands. For those that are ugly and vicious and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. It's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it, a hunter can never get bit. A zoo should have bugs, so I'll capture a thwirl whose legs are snarled up in a terrible snarl. And then I'll go out and I'll capture some chugs, some keen shooter, mean shooter, bean shooter bugs. I'll go to the African island of Yurka and bring back a tizzle-top tufted mazurka, a kind of canary with quite a tall throat. His neck is so long, if he swallows an oat for breakfast the first day of April, they say it has to go down such a very long way that it gets to his stomach the 15th of May. I'll bag a big bug who is very surprising. A feller who has a propeller for rising. And zooming around, making cross-country hops. From Texas to Boston with only two stops. Now that sort of thing for a bug is just tops. And when I've caught him, 
Then the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a wild tic-tac-toe. With X's that win and with zeros that lose, he'll look mighty good in this zoo of McGrews. I'll bring back a gusset, a gherkin, a gasket, and also a gooch from the wilds of Nantasket. And eight Persian princes will carry the basket. But what their names are, I don't know. So don't ask it. In a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called the Natch that no other hunter's been able to catch. He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout, and no one's been able to make him come out. But I'll coax him out with a wonderful meal that's cooked by my cooks in my cooker mobile. They'll fix up a dish that is just to his taste. Three chicken croquettes made of library paste. Then sprinkled with peanut shucks, pickled and spiced. Then baked at 600 degrees and then iced. It's mighty hard cooking to cook up such feasts. But that's how the new zoo McGrew Zoo gets beasts. I'll go to the faraway mountains of Tosk, near the river of Nopsk, and I'll bring back an Opsk, a sort of a kind of a thingamabobsk, who only eats rhubarb and corn on the cobsk. Then people will flock to my zoo in a mobsk. McGrew, they will say, does a wonderful jobsk. He hunts with such vim and he hunts with such vigor. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. And speaking of birds, there's the Russian Paluski, whose head ski is red ski and belly is blue ski. I'll get one of them for my Zuski Magruski. Then the whole town will gasp. <gasps> Why, this boy never sleeps! No keeper before ever kept what he keeps! There's no telling what that young fellow will do. And then, just to show them, I'll sail to Katru and bring back an itkutch, a preep, and a prue, a nurkle, a nerd, and a seersucker, too. I'll hunt in the jungles of Hipponohungus and bring back a flock of wild Biponobungus. The Biponobungus from Hipponohungus are better than those down in Diponodungus and smarter than those out in Nippononungus. And that's why I'll catch them in hippo no hungus instead of those others in Nungus and Dungus. And people will say when they see these bips bounding, this zookeeper new keeper's simply astounding. He travels so far that you'd think he would drop. When do you suppose this young fellow will stop? Stop? Well, I should, but I won't stop until I've captured a fizzum a wizum a dill The world's biggest bird from the island of Guark, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back home to my park, the whole world will say, Young McGrew's made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses have made him the greatest of all the McGruzes. Wow! They'll all cheer. What this zoo must be worth! It's the gold darndest zoo on the face of the earth.
Yes, that's what I'd do, said young Gerald McGrew. I'd make a few changes if I ran the zoo.